I get excited because I like the intersection of services and technology. And now we are at the point where when we think about outsourced services as an industry and technology enablement as an industry, the intersection becomes vital. And I mean, for example, us on Zoom, but, but more importantly, how we conduct our work every day, deciding to go to the office or not, not having to. I've been home since mid-March and I have little intention, I'll, I'll not say no, but little intention of going back on a regular basis because I don't need to physically be there in general. I can conduct my work remotely, but I also believe it's a great opportunity for manufacturing to really start to use AI and robotics, not to reduce the workforce specifically, but to empower the workforce to continue to be productive, potentially even more productive by reducing the automatic work, the, the rote actions that can be handled by a machine. So the, the issue is, if you think about HR from the spectrum of, of, of recruiting and onboarding and cultivating and, and curating leaders, we've got a different paradigm. And that paradigm is impacted by lack of social interaction but it also now is incumbent on senior people to be mentors, to cultivate up, if you will, to curate up, and also on all of us to be more communicative, to, to take responsibility for advancing our own workforces and our interactions. So to me, this is, it's not that it's a, a positive thing that we have COVID because people are dying and that's just horrible for me to even think about, but but it, it's, a, it's a catalyst to do things differently. And I think the investors that find the right recipe are the ones that will have greater outsized returns as a result. We are fundamentally changed in the way we go to work. That has a lot of different aspects to it. It should be something we embrace and, and is empowering if we can make money at it too and not lose a lot by the wayside. I, that's what concerns me is what we lose, especially for young people.